Hello, I'm Sean Sands of GamersWithJobs.com, and welcome back to the Kerbal Space Program. If you caught uh, episode one, you know we're putting together a rocket to the moon for uh, for our Kerbals to finally go. I, and I have a mission for this to um, plant a flag on the moon. That's 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 our goal. This this mission, uh, a little uh, further along in the um, camp or the the campaign career series of the latest release of Kerbal Space Program, which is the beta release, uh, beta than ever. Uh, we're gonna, nope, 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 not what I wanted to do. So I wanna make a couple of adjustments here to my craft before we go to launch. Um, at least one of them sort of showing off one of the new features. So uh, a new feature in this update is the ability to really fine tune the placement of pieces on the rocket, uh, which really hasn't been there before. No, I want to try. Uh, so what I want to do, the reason I'm doing this, and we'll, we'll launch very soon here, is I want to, since I don't have enough room for lander legs, I just don't have the part count. I want to make sure that this lands as flat on the moon as possible. So historically, what you've had to do is just sort of eyeball it, which is, I mean, still not a bad idea, but, um, and that's, that's a little close, but um, actually they have a way now where you can actually offset directly instead of lifting, picking up the part and then kind of re trying to replace it. The part stays in place and you can move it in I'm going to have it not snap to a location, get a little smoother. Uh, and, and this allows you to kind of fine tune a little more instead of before where you'd pick it up and put it and pick it up and put it. And sometimes parts wouldn't land back in the right place or they wouldn't have the right sort of symmetry. Um, this makes it much easier to take a part you already have on your ship and adjust it directly. Uh, what I'm hoping to do is land on the moon with all four of these engines still on. Um, so I'm going to need to manage my fuel to make sure that is achievable. Um, worst case scenario, we'll, we'll jettison these and we'll just have to, you know, find a really flat space to land straight up and down. But there we go. Um, hmm. Just having a look. Normally, I'd have some science on here, you know, maybe a science canister, goo canister, to be able to pick up some science on the moon. But again, I have a limit of 30 parts that I can have on my ship at any one time. And I think we're right up against that. So, impromptu moon launcher. This is it. We're going to try to take this to the moon. Now, one of the things I kind of want to do is I'll walk you through uh, my the way I get to space, the way I, I establish an orbit, the way I kind of lay out a plan for getting to the moon uh, and then actually doing it, uh, just in case you haven't played before. Or you have played and you're like, I have no idea how how to get a rocket to space. Um, because in the real world, well, I don't. I mean, I'm, I'm definitely not a rocket scientist. And I, even though I'm going to use terms like prograde and retrograde, and um, I'll probably use them wrong, so don't worry too much about it. So here is our Mooner shot. Uh, let's just check our staging real quick. So at the launch, all the main engines are gonna go. Ooh, that wobble. That's not good. You know what, let's go ahead and get off the ground. All right, we are not very steady here. We got a little bit of drift. It's all right, we're gonna try and manage that. So you can see here, what I'd like to do is up to about 10,000 feet, keep this as vertical as possible. Um, this sort of circle with the lines in it is the prograde vector or sort of the direction our ship is going. It doesn't necessarily mean it's always the direction the ship is pointing, which is an important difference. So I want to try and get that to the center as much as possible. And it's going to be hard to kind of keep talking, but we'll do it. We'll manage this. So we're, we're in a little bit better shape. Now, what I want to do is add... 10,000 meters when I hit that point I want to turn to land right about on this 90 that's a 45 degree east turn uh, and with any luck we will be able to do that here in just a little bit so I'm watching I see my solid rocket boosters they're starting to get low we're slowly getting up gonna, oh 
I didn't have the throttle up. That was a mistake. Oh, okay, so that's bad. That's a thing that just, hmm. Um, yeah. You remember, hey, you guys, remember when there was a fuel tank here? It was, uh, those were good times. Uh, so, because I'm playing in cheating the geezer mode, I'm going to revert the flight back to the vehicle assembly. Uh, because we had some, we got some fixing to do. That did not, look, I'm not going to lie. That didn't, that was, that didn't go well. Um, which is part of the joy of Kerbal Space Program. <laughs> Actually, I'm really happy when things don't go all that well. Uh, hmm. What do I want to try and do? I had a lot of wobble there, but you know what? I'm going to risk it. Okay, I'm going to take those off. And I'm going to put on a couple of... Where are they? Separatrons. I'm going to spend my part my parts there instead to get those solid rocket boosters away from the ship. Boy. Okay, what's our center of mass? Um, nope, center of mass. You know, it looks a little off. Why are, why are we off? Hmm. Nah, it'll be fine. It'll be fine. This is a great idea. We're in great shape. Uh, okay. Let's, and let's, yeah, let's save that. Try this again. Okay, so two, two things. We got, we got our separatrons. Those are little, little boosters that will send the rockets, those, those rockets firing off and uh, we don't want to activate those first. Those need to go in the stage where, so when we, when we release the solid rocket boosters, those little tiny rockets we just put on will fire and hopefully shoot them off in a different direction than the rest of the craft. Um, do I not have SAS on? Okay, let's, we gotta get out of here. We're wobbly. No more wobbles. Alright. Three, two, one. Launch. <laughs> okay, a little late on that, but it's fine. Alright. So even though we took those struts off, I think we're still relatively okay. They probably weren't totally necessary. So this time what we want to see happen is when the solid rocket boosters unload their fuel, we're going to stage to the, um, the decouplers here, and those separatrons will fire, hopefully sending them so that the top parts don't come crashing into the rest of the spacecraft this time, and we get to keep our, our precious, precious fuel tank, uh, which we're going to need. We're going to the, to the moon. I don't see the moon. All right. So again, we're aiming at 10,000 meters. Uh, our thrust weight is up to 2.5, so we're in good shape there. We're just waiting for these solid rocket boosters to finish their burn. Remember, solid rocket boosters, they burn. You can't slow them down, can't speed them up. They just burn until they're done. And here we go. Let's see if our new plan works. And solid rocket boosters are out. Ah, <laughs> Trial and error. This game's about trial and error. All right, you know what? I'm gonna put them on top this time. Because our real problem is we, not that we need them to go up, we need them to go, oops, no. Yeah, yeah, we need them to go out. We need them to go out like that. All right, when we, let's save. All right, when this time, as soon as we're on the launching pad, we're probably going to go ahead and launch because uh, we don't want to get that wobble again. And T gives us SAS on once we're there. Z full throttle, T for SAS on, Z full throttle, launch. God. <laughs> Job, guys. <laughs> uh, I'm gonna revert that, I think. <laughs> no, we definitely gotta make it to the moon. Don't worry, this is not gonna be a problem. <laughs> okay. Uh, these need to go up to here in the staging session. Uh, SAS on, full throttle, launch. Hey, I'm pretty good at Kerbal Space Program. I know you might, you might be thinking I'm not, but totally totally good at Kerbal Space Program. All right, this is a good launch. 
we're straight, got full throttle, uh, thrust to weight's in good shape, so we're, we're being real efficient through the atmosphere. Uh, Jeb, Jeb's having a blast. It's important, it's important for Kerbals to have fun. They get, they get real, uh, they get real unhappy uh, if, if you don't, the care and feeding of Kerbals is, it's just an art more than a science. Solid rocket boosters are halfway out. It's a good clean launch. All right, this is the one. How are all our staging here? Yes, 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 yes. All right, this is it. We're up to about six, seven thousand. And things are gonna happen pretty fast now. Solid rocket out, good, 10,000 do our gravity turn to 45 degrees. All right, that was, oh, textbook, textbook. So the next thing I wanna do is I'm watching our apoapsis height. So here is our, our height. Here is how far up we would go if we suddenly turned off the engines and there was no atmosphere. When this gets to about 50,000, I'm going to turn even further down to about here. Um, to keep sort of evening out that, that, that orbital trajectory. I have full throttle the whole time, even though the thrust to weight is much higher than 1.7 now. As we go up through the atmosphere, we have less air pushing against us, so it's a kind of a nice, even, steady pace. Um, in this stage, we still have about 1,500 delta V to go, so we're good there. We're watching this number here, waiting for it to get to 50,000, and we do our next thing. And let's go ahead and burn it. Burn it more to the east. Now, why east? Um, because, and I heard somebody describe it this way recently, that is in concert with the way the planet is turning. Now, hang on, we're gonna get to an apoapsis of about 80,000, and I'm happy there. And we have two minutes till we get to this height, and about 20 seconds before we're there, we're going to finish off circularizing our orbit. But while we're waiting for that, uh, I was saying the reason you want to go east instead of another direction is the same. It's it's like jumping off of a moving walkway. Um, you know, the planet being the moving walkway, when you jump up, you still have some delta V in the direction you were going. Uh, you still have that momentum. Um, so if you tr jump up and keep going that way, then that's that much less kind of fuel you need to burn to get to the speed you need to be at to orbit the planet. Um, so it's essentially just a fuel saving technique. Now, we're going to go to the map mode here. I, I, you don't need to do this once you get comfortable with uh, creating a, uh, an orbit. This can get fairly simple, but I'm just going to go ahead and draw one out to be safe. Um, let me circularize it relatively. Apoapsis and periapsis, um, in case you don't know, apoapsis is your highest point above the planet, uh, peri or above your target, and periapsis is your closest point to that target. Um, for a relatively circular orbit, it makes sense to have them both about the same. So we have a burn of about 30 seconds to do that. Uh, what we want to do is during that burn, we want to have about half of it in the front part, you know, before you get to the apoapsis in the second half after. Um, so you want to take this, divide it by about half. So that'd be roughly 14. And at 14 seconds till the burn point, you want to go ahead and start that burn. So that means you'll be 14 seconds before and 14 seconds after. Just sort of, again, more sort of fuel saving techniques. And Z for Z means go. We aimed it at the blue thing, which is uh, the target. And we're going to burn this down. And you can see our meters per second to reach the uh, desired outcome is going down. Now, we'll probably run out of fuel on this stage first. It's okay. We'll just activate the next stage once we get there. There we go. And 90, 80, 70, 60, 50, 40, 30, 20, 10. Ah, good. And we'll just click that off. And ta-da, that's how you do an orbit. So one of the things I like to think about, you know, I remember early on when I first started playing this game, I was thinking, 
oh god i just used so much fuel to get into orbit how how am i going to be able to do anything else um a good rule of thumb is orbit is halfway to everywhere not technically true um but it's easy to get into orbit and think, oh, you know, it took me that much fuel just to get up a few thousand meters. How am I even going to make to the moon? But really, that that just getting out of the atmosphere is, it's a huge deal. It's a huge deal. Um, so what I'm doing now is I'm starting to plot my course to get to the moon. So we just burned, We I think we started with, what, like 8,000 delta v in our rockets and now we're down to 4,000. we've used up half of our fuel now i just know from experience that to get to the moon is going to take about 800 delta v so getting from orbit to the moon is what is that like you know 20 percent of the amount of fuel you would use to just get into orbit um so you know get into orbit have some fuel you're probably in pretty good shape uh, so, uh, you know, like I said, I happen to know, want to get this up to about 800, looking about 860 Delta V is going to be a good lunar trajectory. And then, whoop, okay, yeah, good start. And then we'll just kind of move this. Oh, yeah, perfect. Right away. Bam. So, happen to know if you just... I was looking at it like this, a good place to put your node if you're going to the moon is essentially just look at where the moon is compared to, you know, try and put the Earth, the Earth, Kerbal behind, Kerbin behind you or in front of you. Get it in a position where the moon is just rising over and wherever that is, make your node there and stretch it out and it's going to be really close to where you'll, where you'll want to be. Um, during this time, and the reason it's showing this all over here when the moon is over here, uh, time passes for you to get to the node and then to fly out to the moon, uh, and the moon will be in this position by the time your craft is here. So we're going to accelerate time, and again, we're looking at about a 36 second burn, which means we want to take off at about uh, uh, 18 seconds. So this is the T minus the node. That burn is going to spend 860.5 of our remaining 4,000 delta V, which will leave us lots and lots and lots of fuel to actually land on the moon. We could get in orbit. I don't know if I'll do that or not. Uh, might just take a straight shot in. Okay, time's going fast. Going to slow it down a little bit. I don't have, so there's a mod called Alarm Clock that really helps out to make sure you don't overshoot your nodes i don't have that installed right now uh i do i should i uh, can't tell you how many times i've been like <laughs> you know just zipping through time and go fly past my node um have to create a new node all right so this is be nice and cinematic let's let's look at this burn okay so we have t minus oh like four seconds oh no there and go t minus go so as you can see you can actually see the moon right now like i said the moon is just going to should just be coming up over the horizon here um presumably and we're burning sort of along along the vector to take us out of Kerbin's direct orbital influence and get us on that trajectory and good stop how we do uh, let's take a look we'll just click that all right it does that sometimes so it looks like we'll get a lunar encounter right about here so we're good enough now if we want during the during the intervening trip we can uh yeah we can fine-tune all right so we'll speed up some time let's do the time warp again Pause for laughter. <laughs> and we will close the gap to the moon. Now, right now, if we did nothing else, we have a nice lunar encounter. We would have a periapsis, but it means we'd be you know, at our closest, about 26,000 meters from the moon. And then we hit a, uh, the, the moon's gravity would slingshot us right the hell out of, out of Kerbin, uh, out into the deep intersolar space. Uh, so we'll definitely either 
I think we'll probably probably just take it right in and just go directly for a landing, but you could obviously set up a uh, an orbit around the moon as well. So once it's sort of targeted that in, we're looking at about a height of 34,000. As you can see, the moon is much closer now than Kerbin, which we have uh, left behind. So accelerate time here again. And get a little closer. This is our time to reaching the periapsis to the moon. So if we can go a little faster than that. Okay, that's now I'm just freaking out. Um, hmm, how do I want to do this? I think we will just go directly for a landing. I don't know. So what I'm looking at is we only have 502 delta V remaining on this stage. So I think we aren't going to have all four tanks at our disposal um, unless unless we just keep them on for the hell of it if we're close enough down even if those tanks run out i will probably i'll probably leave them on unless it's just burning so much extra fuel to have that weight hanging on closing the gap you can see up here we're about 150,000 meters from the surface of the moon Coming in on the day side, which just makes sense. And so I'm going to switch our down here, our uh, speed to measure our speed against the surface. Uh, I like this. Now you can just click this little button uh, when you have a pilot in, and they will just go right to retrograde or prograde retrograde being the opposite direction you're currently going. Uh, and I think they will hold there even how far are we out from periapsis it's going to get us down to about three minutes and then good coming on to looks like a relatively even surface rather than a bunch of highlands or something like that so what i want to do first i'm actually not going to hold us on retrograde because what i want to do bur first is burn off our lateral velocity I think of it in two ways. So there's the speed at which we are going up and down from the moon. And right now our vertical speed is minus 200. And there's the speed that we're going, let's call it left to right over the moon. So what I want to do first is just burn off that lateral speed so that essentially we're falling straight down. Any remaining delta V is just going to be a straight down proposition. And we're going to have all four tanks just isn't going to happen, I don't think. Still got it. You can see that our prograde or our retrograde is slowly moving up. That means as it goes further and further up, that means we're falling up and down directly. Yeah, I'm going to blow off of these tanks. Jeez, <laughs> that was terrifying. <laughs> All right. Close to going straight up and down now. Oof, no landing gear. This is going to be exciting. For me, I mean, if you're still awake, you know, God bless you. But for me, it's going to be going to be a little nerve wracking. So right now, what's happening is we're falling pretty much not directly down, but we've burned off a lot of that lateral speed. Most of our of our speed is exclusively up and down. Now we're still falling towards the moon at almost uh, 200 and it will be close to 300 meters per second. Over here, I notice this thing called suicide burn. Um, is if you wanted to be extremely efficient with your fuel, this is how much further you have to. You have to put your uh, your engines at full speed uh, to make up the what remains. So the suicide burn is 16,000. We're 21,000. That means I only have about. 4,000 meters to burn off the rest of the speed without crashing into the surface. I'm not going to play it that close, but I am going to get down to about 5,000 before I start burning off some of the rest of this. Uh, vertical speed's pretty fast, but I think we've got the engines to burn it off. Uh, coming into cratery area, again, sure would be nice to have that, that sweet landing gear. Uh, yeah, like I say, I'm going to get down to about I'm going to get down to about 10,000 here before I start burning some of this, the, some more of this speed off. Okay, let's, let's go. All right. 
So you can see we're slowing down relative to the surface now. Still slowing down, still 6,000 meters up. I'd like to get that almost exactly vertical. Oh man, that, that ground is coming up real fast. <laughs> 3,000 meters. All right, we're getting control of it. We're almost down to where I'm totally comfortable now. Get down to about 40, okay, good. So we are still 1,800 meters up. We got a ton of fuel. This is just a matter of can we land without tipping the damn thing over. Ugh. I give us like a 50% shot at that. I am not what you would call um, optimistic. 600 meters, 500 meters. All right, I'm gonna take it real careful now. 300 meters. Two hundred meters. One fifty. Ninety eighty. How much? Hold, hold, yeah! <laughs> okay, I am, <laughs> I am terrified to have him get out now, because <laughs> it turns, it turns the SAS off, because uh, I don't have any auto SAS. But I, okay, you know what? I'm going to save, because I'm not afraid to save scum this thing if I have to. Uh, let's get a crew report. All right, and we are using up our electric charge quick. So get out, hope for the best, let go. Ah. Okay, quick, do an EVA report. Good job, got it, plant that flag. Don't plant it in the, okay, it's, it's in the spacecraft. That's, okay, fine. Oh, <laughs> what did I just, I, I just blew up the flag. <laughs> All right, quick, get back into spacecraft before something goes horribly wrong. And F, F, board, uh, T. We did it, oh my God. I guess that count, does that count as having planted a flag? Yup, <laughs> don't know if you saw that. I planted the flag and it was, it clipped into the main rocket engine. It just goes shooting off this way. Can you see it? No, it just... Oh! <laughs> Beautiful. Beautiful. Oh, someday somebody's got to come get that. All right. And so that was the hard part. Save. Going to go ahead and get back up into orbit here. Take off from the moon. And we'll get a little ways up and then... Turn for an orbit. We've got just a we've got a ton of fuel left. Well, not a ton, but we've got a good amount of fuel left. I'm real happy about happy about where we're at. Um, okay, I think we can just flat out turn this thing now. Here's our liquid fuel. Oh, you know, I say a ton. Yeah, I think we're good. I think we're gonna be okay. Just gotta get that orbit around the moon. And then we gotta burn away from it enough to get our orbit back around Kerbin. And then we'll just go home. 
80, yeah, still got 1400 Delta B. Or if it's happening, we're seven, 8,000 meters up, so we're nice and safe. Probably not the most efficient orbital I've ever done. I really should have done it more at the, yeah, I don't, I'm, doing a, I'm doing a bad job there. I'm being, I'm being sloppy, don't be sloppy. I know better than that. Yeah, let's see, what is going to be the best way to get home? Okay, we're trying to get our Now I don't have, I know there are mods out there for like, uh, you know, making sure that you have enough food or supplies. I'm not, I'm not that hardcore about it. Um, so, you know, essentially I have infinity time to get them back, get, get, get old, old Jeb back in, uh, safely in, into Kerbin's atmosphere. Um, and make sure also I don't go crashing into the moon during my burn. Uh, I'm pretty happy with that. 223 meters per second gets us a periapsis of 512. We'll still have 1,000. Plenty good. So you can see here the little arrow um, shows us. Okay, why can't I turn? I don't seem to have any control of my spacecraft. Hmm. Trying to figure out why I can't do anything. Wonder if that's a bug. Oh, because I'm an idiot. <laughs> you can't control your spacecraft while you're warping time. Ah, oh, so dumb. It's simple. It's the simple things that still catch me off from time to time. I'm like, oh, can't control this. No, you have to be at normal time to be able to turn or change your thrust or anything like that. Uh, now we can get close to our node. It's only a 12 second burn. Going around, around the moon. Dark side of the moon. Oh, oh, that, see? Ah. Uh, yeah, just shoot right for home. Here we go. Come on and stop. How are we looking? We're looking real good. Real good. Real good. Let's, we're going to skirt right over the surface of the moon. But it's going to be super dark. I don't think we're going to be able to see that real well. Uh, I love these little shots. Even though this is super dark, I don't know how well it's coming through on the video. But these, it's just, oh, the, this game just has some epic shots sometimes. Just pure, like, 2001 A Space Odyssey kind of shots. Uh, sun coming up over over the lunar surface. Yeah, I could look at that all day. See, that's this is what I... God, when I was growing up, like, this is what I hope video games would be. I, I mean, I know it's not, you know, crazy visuals or anything like that, but just, hey, here's a game where you can just go send rockets everywhere, and it's awesome. And it just, you know, and occasionally it looks, you know, like like something you'd imagine, you know, cinematic and kind of a movie. All right. So we are going to turn retrograde. Um... So we can burn off this last remaining bit of orbital velocity to get us into Kerbin's atmosphere. And then we'll go home and we'll call it a successful mission. We got Jeb to the moon. We landed without landing gear. Uh, we put a flag down. That flag blew up and, and landed several hundred meters away. Uh, we forgot how time warp works and that you can't turn during time warp. It's been just really, this has been educational top to bottom for me uh, and hopefully for you too. Probably not, for, probably more me than you, uh, but I, I can live with that. I, I, I can, 
I can live in that world. Let's just watch the planet get, oh, so gorgeous. Now I happen to know that time warp evaporates at 60,000, so I wasn't that worried about suddenly crashing into the planet. Um, all right, so here's what's left. Actually, so all these parts cost stuff. As you saw earlier, um, if you land with parts, you can their, their cost is partially or fully refunded. So I'm actually not gonna jettison this part, uh, the engine. Uh, I'm going to land with it because I think I have enough shoots to be able to do that. And if not, I can always burn a little bit to kind of burn off any any remaining uh, speed. Uh, you can see we're starting to hit the reentry. Uh, we do not do not have deadly uh, any of the deadly reentry mods here, and they haven't added that yet. So uh, we are in no danger from this horrible fire. How's it looking in there? Looking pretty good. Looking pretty toasty. Doesn't face Jed. He's a pro. Jeb, Jeb's not Jeb's first day at the uh, at the fire park. Twenty thousand meters away from splashdown. Successful mission. Can you see the moon? No, it's not there. Burn off the last of that. I'm going to get down to about mm, 5,000 feet or so, and I'll probably blow the chutes. I think we can speed up time a little bit. We're at a reasonable speed now. We're down to just 300 meters a second over the surface, coming down at 193 per second. We're deep in the atmosphere again. And chutes in. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, deploy. All right. Now those will puff out at about 500 meters. Now remember I was mentioning earlier, um, if you're coming in over land, you really can't trust this number to be an accurate representation of how far you are uh, from landing. Um, it's different over water, basic, basically the, the same um, because because sea level, because that's how sea level works, and science. Having fun, Jeb? Yeah, just looking around. Turn to open. Don't turn to open that yet, Jeb. In time, in time. And we'll speed up time warp a little bit. I think we're okay. I don't think that's going to be fast enough to do any damage to the engine when we hit. So I'm not going to try and burn any off. 200 meters from success. One hundred and you, you feel that? That's anticipation. It's pretty great, right? 40, 30, 20. 10 and splash down back on Kerbin. The Mooner mission is a success. The vehicle is recovered and we get stuff. Sweet, sweet stuff. So let's see what we got for that. Science, 82 science, up to 178 science. So much, so much new stuff to learn. Uh, we recovered a lot of those parts, including our fuel tank, including that engine. That was another basically 1,200 uh, 1200 monies uh, that we got back to spend somewhere else. Jeb gained experience. How is he doing? Is he level two yet? Oh, so close. So close. Got five for, for planning on the moon. And guys, guys and girls, that's Kerbal Space Program. I mean, it's how good is that how are you not playing this right now how are you not turning this video off and playing kerbal space program and landing your own jeb kerman on the moon like that's that's it, it's just so much fun uh so thank you for joining me this was a blast i'm uh always have fun with these and hope you did too uh and with that i'm sean sands from gamerswithjobs.com see you next time